Hello and welcome to the Basic Trading videos here on the Back to Basics Radio website. We're excited to be with you today and um, we want to just reiterate the vision that we have for, uh, for these videos. And Brian, if you want to just share a little bit about that and kind of reiterate that. Sure. Yeah, we're, well, you know, basically we're, we're looking to just encourage um, guys in, in ministry, guys in leadership. And uh, as we stated on, on the first um, uh, the first one of the, one of these videos, you know, basically this whole thing is about encouragement. It's it's about um, just sharing experiences, sharing, um, you know, things that God's taught us over the years in the ministry, and, and just really wanting to to help out uh, guys that are out there, whether they're uh, you know senior pastors, lead pastors. Uh, youth ministries, worship leaders, missionaries, just, you know, we're just wanting to um, make a contribution and do what we can to help encourage uh, God's work in their lives personally and, of course, uh, God's work through their lives as well in, um, in the ministry. And uh, recently, you just had a, you were just traveling to uh, York, England, and did a whole conference, um, at, or did the pastor's conference there, and, and you did a whole series or a study on um, the calling to lead and had seven different uh, topics on that. And Yeah, yeah, and I, and I thought it would be good to take those, um, those points of that leadership message that I gave there in York uh, to kind of just take each of those points individually, you know, and um, I think they're all you know, excellent and uh, appropriate for ministry for, for all time um, and, and right, obviously right down to today as well. So Yeah, those seven are prayer, study, teaching, vision, discipleship, faith, and evangelism. And the one that we're going to take, uh, start off with today would be prayer. Yeah. So if you want to just take that in. Yeah, prayer. You know, the thing, uh, and, and just looking at the whole thing of leadership, I I really think that, um, you know, we've got a lot of conferences these days. We've got a lot of seminars. Um, it, you know, of course, we've got seminary. We've got seminary courses, Bible college. And in all of those things, it's not too often that you actually hear much about prayer. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about it. I've never even, I've never seen a seminary course on prayer or a Bible college course on prayer for that matter. Uh, and rarely... Uh, at, at a conference, do you have, you know, a, a big emphasis on prayer? Of course, we're all praying all the time and everything. Yeah. I understand that. But prayer is such a, a vital essential of leadership. Yeah. And, and if you don't learn from the early stages of ministry uh, the importance of prayer and, and begin to learn to pray, uh, because really, you know, ultimately everything kind of flows out of your own relationship with the Lord. And um, what we're doing uh, is a, it's a supernatural thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's not something that I can just work myself up for. Uh, I need supernatural power and I need supernatural insight. And all of those things will come to me uh, through prayer as I'm seeking the Lord in prayer. So when, when I'm looking at, you know, a list of, um, you know, different aspects of leadership, right at the top of that list to me ought to be prayer. Because if I'm not a man of prayer, I might be energetic and I might be innovative and I, you know, I might be able to, to do a lot of things that look like something's happening. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to have more than that. There's got to be something powerful that impacts people in their hearts. And I think that prayer is the thing that um, it's kind of like the it's the undergirding of everything else we do. It's really the foundation of everything else we do. It seems like in the busyness of ministry, the first thing yeah. we neglect is prayer. Yes, I, I, you know, it's true. I mean, yeah. it's true for me personally. I know it's true for a lot of other guys in ministry. I know it's true for, uh, you know, sometimes uh, whole staffs. You know, you just, you're, you're so into the mechanics of ministry. You're so into the business of doing church. Uh, prayer is easy, easily neglected. Yes. So do you want to share a little bit on those, those different points on uh, prayer, specifically um, the, tr the trinity of ministry, looking at uh, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and prayer? Yeah, yeah and, that, and that's really it to me. Um, you know, I kind of 
<laughs> I think I spontaneously came up with that Trinity ministry thing. But, but you know, that's what it is. It's what, we're, what we're doing is we're proclaiming the Word of God. We're radically depending on the, the Spirit's, you know, enabling. And we're, we're praying. We're praying before mm-hmm. to get vision for ministry. We're praying during to have strength for ministry. We're praying afterward. Uh, to follow up on everything that we've done, that God's work would, you know, it would go on. It yes. wouldn't just stop with that particular event, that the devil would be uh, beaten back. And so I think that that, um, that really is the, the trinity of ministry, the word, the spirit, and prayer. And um, like I said a moment ago, prayer, prayer just, it needs to, uh, to hold a real... Um, primary place in our in our understanding of of the Christian life and uh, especially of ministry yeah in that study you talked about prayer and great men of faith as well yeah, um, yeah. when you do a survey of uh, biblical history you do a survey of church history uh, you will find always across the board those people who have had uh, the most uh, powerful impact uh, on the church been used in extraordinary ways, you're going to find that these guys were, were men of prayer. They mm-hmm. understood prayer. It was a vital part of their personal lives. It was a vital part of their ministry. We've all, we've all heard the stories, anybody who's you know, studied ministry a bit or been around for a while, uh, we've heard the stories of the great work that God did back in the 1800s to Charles Spurgeon, mm-hmm. uh, the, the massive crowds that would come each week to the Metropolitan Tabernacle. And many have probably heard the story about, uh, you know, Spurgeon was asked on one occasion, uh, you know, what's the secret to the success of the ministry? He led them to the basement of the church, opened the door, and there they discovered hundreds of people there Mm. seeking God, crying out to the Lord, praying for the ministry that was taking place. Uh, Beth and Lloyd-Jones, when she was asked about um, kind of the, you know, her husband, Martin Lloyd-Jones, what what was kind of the key to his success, or however it was asked. She said, what, what people um, often don't understand about my husband is that he was an evangelist and he was a man of prayer. Mm. And um, wow. so, you know, you, you just find this pattern consistently all the way through. And Jesus, of course, um, set, you know, he set the example for us. Yeah. I mean, he was the one who went off to pray. He was the one who told us things like men should always pray mm. and not lose heart. He's the one who taught us to pray by example and then even, you know, mm. of course taught us to pray. Look at Paul's letters. Uh, Paul's letters are filled with references to his prayer life for the various churches. Uh, and then we have, in some of his epistles, we have some examples of those great, great prayers uh, yeah. that were prayed by Paul. So you, you always find that connection. Um, Men that God have used uh, powerfully, significantly throughout the history of the church have always been men of prayer. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you brought up a significant point as well when you said take the lead in prayer and don't delegate it yeah. um, to others as yeah. a pastor probably. Would. Yeah, and, and that's, I've seen this happen, and quite frankly, I've done it myself. You know, in yeah. early days of ministry, it was like, oh, I've got so many things going here. Let somebody else do the prayer meeting or, hey, you know, I don't, I don't have time for that. And it wasn't that I wasn't praying, um, but I really needed to take the lead in prayer. You know, people often ask the question, well, how, you know, how can we get our church to pray? You'll never get them to pray if you're not praying yourself. You know, that's, that's the first rule. So you've got to become uh, a man of prayer, and you've got to have that deep conviction of the importance of prayer. And when that happens, and you're communicating the need for prayer, the people are going to sense that this you know, this is real for this guy. This isn't just something he's telling us to do because it's part of what you do as a Christian. He really believes in the power of prayer and has a passion about prayer. And that's contagious. That's going to get people to say, I want to go to that prayer meeting. I'm going to be there. I'm going to show up. So uh, don't delegate it. Don't pass it off to somebody else. Uh, We can't obviously be at all the prayer meetings, you know. And and of course, as your church, you know, depending on the size of your church, that's going to vary. But if you got a key prayer meeting at your church, you need to be leading it. If there's a key pr- uh, prayer thing revolved around your ministry, you need to be right there 
uh, visibly in, involved in that. I, I really believe that. I think you might have just answered that question that I asked, but is um, what are some practical things a pastor can do to cultivate a praying church or a church that prays? Well, <laughs> you just pray. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, where, that's where it starts. Um, yeah. You know, praying ourselves and letting God show us, you know, um, through prayer uh, how vitally important that is, as I have said. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, I was traveling. I was in South America. And um, one night, I, you know, I couldn't sleep, a jet lag thing. And I was lying there, and um, I was kind of frustrated. I was thinking about ministry back home, and I was thinking about a lot of things that were um, not the way they should be. And, you know, Lord, wh what about this and what about that? And the Lord spoke to me so clearly. He said, when you go back home, what I want you to do is I want you to set aside an hour each morning of the week, and I want you to grab a handful of guys, different guys each day, and I want you to just start really praying. Mm -hmm. And the context for that was more praying for, uh, you know, we're involved in a lot of missions, a lot of stuff mm -hmm. around the world. The context was uh, get together and pray for these things. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that. When I got back, I grabbed a handful of guys that had ministry or connections in some way to Latin America. Mm -hmm. So we prayed every Tuesday morning for the whole, uh, basically the whole Spanish-speaking world. Um, Wednesday morning, we were praying for um, the, the Islamic world. Had mm -hmm. a couple of uh, guys there who had done missions in uh, different Islamically oriented countries. Had a couple of ex-Muslims that were, you know, had become believers. So anyway, we're every every Wednesday morning, we're praying that God would just pour out His Spirit on the Islamic world. Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday mornings, we were praying for Asia. We were praying for Africa. We yeah. were, um, you know, kind of that. 1040 window kind of a thing. We were praying for that. Again, with guys that had vision for that, passion for that, had been there, whatever. Friday morning, we were praying for, um, we were praying for Europe. We were praying for the UK. And we were praying for the British Commonwealth. And man, the Lord, you know, would just, mm -hmm. through that, there's so much not only happening out there, the people that we're praying for, but just a lot of things happening in our lives. And then what would happen is people just heard, hey, I, I heard about this prayer meeting. Is it true that you've got a prayer meeting in your office every morning? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, could I come? Yeah, sure. Come on over. It's kind of a tight squeeze, but come on. And, uh, you know, so, but again, just... Uh, Catalystic. Yeah, yeah. You're just doing it and, and you're encouraging people, you're inspiring them to do it. And then they take it back and say, hey, we're going to do this too. Yeah. So. You kind of see the fruit of it um, this last summer going to Creation Fest and having a whole week full of yeah. just, you know, a couple thousand people coming out to hear the Bible taught. Yeah. And behind that's just a bunch of prayer. A bunch of the prayer. Praying yeah. For that. And, and, you know, there's so many things that we do that from the human standpoint, everything just seems so impossible. You think, is this thing ever even going to work? And the one thing we do have is, well, we've, we've sure been praying for it. And then, man, you get there and you just see all of, like you said, you just see those answered prayers. Yeah. It's like, wow, Lord, you are so faithful to come and to meet us. And so, uh, but, you know, just to kind of wrap it up, I, um, if you're going to be in leadership and especially pastorally, if you're going to, if you're going to lead a ministry, if you're going to uh, pastor a church, then start as early as possible cultivating your own personal prayer life and then let that just overflow into all the different ministry you're involved in. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time to listen. And um, uh, we're excited to present more of these on uh, the next six topics coming up. I think the next one is going to be on study. So um, we hope you'll join us for those as well. And we pray that God continues to bless you and use you in your ministry. God bless.